Hi everyone, I thought I'd walk you through this encaustic painting. It's 12 by 12 inches on ampersand panel. As you can see, I've already started it and that tin that's circled here is my Harmony Gray. It's like a Harmony Mud. It's got a lot of colors in it and I use it to desaturate some highly saturated colors. And here I'm adding a bit of encaustic medium to thin out the yellow, brushing it on with a chip brush really enjoy my chip brushes. They're very inexpensive and if you kind of wipe it pretty fast across the panel you get a pretty thin layer. It also helps if you preheat the panel before you apply the wax. Adding a little bit more encaustic medium, a little bit more harmony mix, that desaturates my colors. And now I've gone a little bit cool into a phthalo blue glaze. Just brushing it over and following my intuition as to where to put the colors. I have no pre-plan, as you can tell. Moving things around on my hot plate, and I'm adding some burnt scarlet to the phthalo blue. And that phthalo blue and the uh, burnt scarlet is gonna make sort of a purplish color. And then I thin it out with a little bit more encaustic medium. A lot of this video is time-lapse, so things are taking me a little bit longer than what you see. <laughs> so when, when I fuse and when I put the paint on, I don't think I'm really doing it all that fast. I actually am spending a lot more time. So now I'm adding that Burnt Scarlet Glaze and building layers. And of course you want to fuse between every layer. So I use up the rest of my Burnt Scarlet Glaze. And notice the values all gone, gone pretty mid-tone. And then I just elevated on uh, these four cradled panels that are surrounded with uh, Reynolds wrap or foil to protect the wood. And it just helps me to elevate it and bring it closer to the camera. And again, I'm using these um, ampersand encaustic board panels, which I really love because you don't get many pinholes. And if you sweep back and, uh, back and forth with the, the uh, whatever you're using to fuse with, you have fewer and fewer pinholes, and that's the kind of surface that I prefer. Everybody's different though. So now I'm adding a bit of uh, off-white to the yellow, making a tint, and uh, putting it on. It looks kind of murky, but uh, I kind of know what I'd like to see there, and I'm just working uh, bit by bit across the panel and adding a little bit more white from a titanium white RNF pigment block right into the pan and that way you can just add just as much as you need diluting it with encaustic medium getting it to be the right consistency the right opacity versus transparency and uh, adding a little bit of that yellow into the pot or the pan I brush it on and go over it a few times and you can see that there's definitely a texture below there. This is uh, definitely time-lapse right now. I'm going to elevate it and fuse. The definition of encaustic is to fuse, to burn in. So make sure that whenever you add a layer of wax that you fuse it in. So there I'm showing you close up. Sweeping of the torch or heat gun. Now I'm going to add some encaustic medium pellets. They're kind of a shortcut to making your own blocks and they melt really quickly. And now I'm going to add some uh, India ink with a fine brush. This is straight ink and it will beat up at first, but if you are kind of persistent with it, You'll get a little bit more of a thick layer, and here you can see I'm using pretty uh, thin brush so that I can get some really defined and thin marks. You want to really let any type of ink dry completely before you fuse it in, but you do want to fuse it in lightly. Uh, before I fuse it, I come in with a mark making tool, and I'm just gouging into the ink and lifting, making some marks, which I love. And by that, uh, this time, the ink has already dried. So I'm actually making these marks in the dried ink. And then I use my ceramic tool and make a little bit thicker marks. Pretty random. 
revealing the underlayers and drawing the upper area to the lower area and revealing some of those nice reddish marks in the lower right hand corner. Here's some close ups. Time to fuse again. And now I thought I would try some of these Dr. P.H. Martin's India inks. They're colored and they're fun to use. And I just chose an iridescent gold ink here. Shake it up first and I try uh, putting it on there. And then I notice it's kind of thick and I spread it around, you know, with just the applier, but I also spread it around a little bit with my hand as well. Just noticing that it's kind of thick. So spreading it with my finger, it's still wet. Uh, it's quite beautiful. You can't really see it all that well here, um, but you want to fuse that in once it's dry. And then um, I'm just going to dilute it now in this, uh, it's actually the cover of one of my candle tins. I save those because I don't cover my waxes, but I save the covers and use them for mixing other things like waxes and inks. And then I just happen to have some of that inky water <laughs> to dilute it it's not uh, it's, it's actually a lot clearer it's not all that black and then brushing it onto the panel again it's a little bit thinner moves around a little bit easier with the brush and uh, spreading it around a little bit of iridescence and then taking a paper towel and moving it around a little bit more I'm actually lifting a bit of it off too and adding some to the lower portion to tie things together. A little paper towel. I love the Burnt Scarlet made by r &F Pigments and I often will clean my palette with a paper towel just to, you know, if I, if I want to have a bigger mixing area or if I'm putting a tin down, I'd like to put it down on a clean part of my palette instead of a lot of uh, encaustic paint. So there's my Burnt Scarlet. I've diluted that again to make it into a nice beautiful warm reddish glaze. And I'm really adding just a final touch here on the top. It's a half circle. And then I also tried some gold leaf. And there are a couple, you know, there are a lot of different brands actually. So you can just try if you ever want to try this, uh, just try the different brands and this one happens to be kind of adhered to the plastic sheet. They're not always like this, but um, this particular brand is, so I can work with it pretty well. So first I try this one and then I try Cricut. Uh, this silver metal leaf is made by Cricut. A lot of you might have a Cricut machine, I don't, but I'm just using the papers. And this one is silver. Uh, I'm actually using the wrong side. I, this is the first time I've used it. So you want to put the shiny side up, which is kind of counterintuitive, but once I figured it out, um, I get the hint that I have to have the shiny side up. And so I'm adding some very thin marks using an embossing tool. You could use a pen or any sharp object to uh, press that into the surface. And then now I'm going to fuse it in lightly. I really did like the effect of the metal leaf. It kind of added just a little bit of shine. I didn't want too much, just a little touch. And so here I'm fusing it in. And the final step is that I like to clean off the edges of my panel. And a real nifty way to do it is just on your heated palette. And if you've got any stubborn wax, use your ceramic loop tool to get any extra wax that didn't melt on your palette. I don't have to hold it there very long. Um, most of it will come off with a paper towel, but my ceramic loop tool is used to get any remaining wax on the edge, and that way I can pop it into a frame. Still cleaning my palette because when I put the edge on there, I don't want to pick up more wax. So you kind of want to clean your palette first. And 
do all four sides, just hold it there until you see it melt, and then have a paper towel ready and waiting so you can mop up the melted wax. And then, you know, don't forget the back. Oftentimes there's a few drips on the back side, and uh, you could either heat that on the back of, uh, heat that on your palette, or just use a ceramic loop tool. Um, usually it comes off quite easily because it hasn't been fused. It just got there because you had wax laying around somewhere. Um, very easy to get that off. And now it's finished, so here it is. I call it Wheaton Field, and here are some close-ups. Thanks everyone. Bye now.